Where on earth can I go to find people intelligent enough to explain something about the future of energy? So I've come here to Imperial College, right in the middle of London, where I'm going to meet some, I think it's fair to say, fairly clever people who are working on completely new ways to generate energy, to generate electricity, to create cleaner and safer ways of dealing with the way we produce electricity. I have heard the term carbon capture for a long time now, and I think most of the people who watch this show will have heard of it, mm. but I think very few of us will actually know what that means. So we're concerned about CO2, which is being emitted from our fossil fuel power stations, and we don't want it to go into the atmosphere, so we have to capture it. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the CO2, which is often comes out with nitrogen from our actual power station, mm -hmm. and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate it. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to react it with a chemical called monoethanol amine. Right. in the solution. So essentially, when the MEA reacts with the CO2, we form a complex. So the first thing we do is we separate the CO2 from the nitrogen. Yep. So going up the flue of the chimney is a, a mixture of, it's not just carbon, is it? There's a mixture of other That's chemicals right. in there. That's right. It, the main things are going to be nitrogen, there's going to be carbon dioxide and some contaminants. Right. But CO2, carbon dioxide and nitrogen are the main things coming out of the in the flue gas. Right. So what we do is we basically take the mixture of gases, we pass it through a solution of this MEA chemical, which has got water in it, right. and essentially we react them together. So the CO2 now reacts, and it stays in the solution. Right. And in our columns, in our plant, the nitrogen carries on going up the column, and effectively our CO2 is in the liquid phase now. Right. That's so, part one. So now we take the solution, it's got the water, MEA, and carbon dioxide all mixed together, and now pump that across to the other column over here. Right. That's called our stripper, or regenerator column. Right. So we now heat it up to about 120 degrees, right. and we basically boil off the CO2. Right. So CO2 will come out the top of that column, nitrogen will come at the top of that column. So we yeah. basically separate them. Yeah. Now this is a teaching plan, so right. we put them back together again. Yes, oh I see. But so in a real power, sta plant, you real power station, we yeah. take the CO2 right now, pressurise it, pump it underground, pump right. it up the road, yeah. under the sea. Yeah. Whereas over here, um, it seems the nitrogen vent out to atmosphere. Right, right. So Klaus, I, I've heard lots of things about hydrogen. We've right. already looked at hydrogen fuel cells in yeah. quite a lot of detail okay. on the series. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the big questions that always comes up when we where discuss it, where from? does the hydrogen come from? Exactly. And si somehow mm -hmm. steaming it out of natural gas, which yeah. is the most common Not thing, plus. seems like, well, that's good. Not particularly sustainable. Well, I'm yeah. wondering. Yes, yeah. that's exactly. my, my question. Exactly. So I believe what you're doing here is finding different ways of, of producing hydrogen. That is exactly right. So what we're doing is we're actually growing these sort of algae here, yeah. So That's, that looks like sort of pond water. It is sort of pond water, right? right? Just just with higher concentrations of algae, right? right? And there's very specific algae, right. Chlamydomonas reinhardtii, they're called, right. okay? And what they do is they can actually produce hydrogen from water. Wow. Directly. So they do it themselves, they do it themselves. little fellas. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, would they do that in nature normally in their normal no, environment? No, I'm afraid I'm afraid we need to be a bit mean to them. <laughs> <laughs> so so we would deprive them of sulfur. So we take right. sulfur away from the medium, right. okay? And under these conditions then they start to produce hydrogen. But from that then you can extract the hydrogen, yep. pressurize it and store it and do exactly. whatever you want with it. Well, you can right. actually pressurize even the system itself a little bit. Right. Yeah. So that's an easier way also to get the hydrogen out of the system. Right. Yeah? So you and you can directly interface that with, with a fuel cell then. Right. I yeah. see. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you can run it directly through a fuel cell directly then, the and fuel then you've got cell. energy yeah. coming from the fuel exactly. cell. Exactly. Because that's wow. a very pure hydrogen that we're producing. Right. Here. So the notion then is to create something that is akin to mm -hmm. a power station, yeah. which has basically exactly. got some yeah. little microbe fellas yeah. in, in a fluid yeah. and electricity coming out the other end. That's that's the idea. Exactly. Right. So, so you would have a sort of big, big rooftop installation, yeah. right? where you let them grow for a while, then they produce hydrogen, and right. you extract the hydrogen and run your fuel cells right. off it. So on an, on an experimental level, then you're, yeah. you've, you've gone that far and you've <coughs> produced hydrogen exactly. and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So has, yeah. has anybody developed a, a scaled up version of it yet? No, not right. yet, not yet. I so think that, that's something that, that we're still working on because one, one big issue is how do you scale up these reactors? So from the point of view of, uh, if we're, say, capturing carbon yeah. effectively from yeah. a traditional power stations, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. could you could that carbon that carbon gas be used in this process? I mean, yes. is there a way of it using could be, that? It could be directly sort of pumped in. They right. love it, right? Uh, algae actually thrive on, on CO2. Right. Yeah, they, they love the, the, the CO2 to, to incorporate and to right. build up biomass. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is a potential use for that 
what yes. is at the moment a kind of problematic waste gas that exactly. we don't want in the atmosphere. That is exactly you could use right. it directly yeah. for making yeah. electricity and yeah. absorbing CO2. Yeah. So now, Emil, I actually drive an electric car now with batteries okay. that you have to charge up and it takes a long time. And I've read about things like supercapacitors without any idea of what they actually are. I mean, a capacitor is where you have two plates of uh, conducting material, you put a what we call a dielectric in between those, and then you charge those plates and they store energy. Well, then you connect it to a circuit and you can discharge that energy. So, but the problem with a normal capacitor is it's, it doesn't store very much energy. Right. Um, but it can store it can store that very quickly. I mean, you can it can sort of quickly, fill yeah. it up sort of instantly, and then. Yeah. It, but then, does it release that energy very quickly? Releases well? the energy very quickly. Right. Yeah. So there's no electrical resistance in in a capacitor. Right. What a supercapacitor does is you massively increase the surface area and you move everything closer together as well because right. the, the energy you store is related to how, how big the area of the plates are and how close they are together. Right. In conventional supercapacitors, there's lots of approaches to achieving that by making foams or uh, what we call activated fibers. So what we've tried to do is try and utilize some of that sort of thinking, but to take a structural material, a carbon fiber, so something you make fishing rods and tennis rackets out right. of, and turn that into an, an energy storage material. So the bodywork of a car then could yeah. be an energy storage thing. That's our sort of dream. So right. anything that carries mechanical load and you need electrical energy, so right. your mobile phone, your laptop, your car, um, unmanned air vehicles, all sorts of things. Wow. We ultimately think you know, we could utilise this material. Right. There, so I mean, and this is these. This is presumably examples of the of material yeah. in, in the state that you've got it. So this is experimental, very much testing out how yeah. it works. Because I mean, that that to me looks like a sheet of carbon fibre. I mean, it, it, it is. Yeah. Oh, it, <laughs> it is. It is. It is a sheet of carbon fibre. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, I was spot on there. I knew exactly what that was. <laughs> but I mean, I can't understand how that can store any electricity. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. So, well, we the amount of energy you can store is related to the surface area. And right. so we've increased the surface area of the fibres a lot and we've looked at different strategies for doing that. One method we do is we expose it to potassium hydroxide, which is basically you know, drain cleaner. Right. And that puts little tiny notches in the surface of the fibres, little pores that we call them. And those pores are so small, they're nanometer scale, that they don't damage the fibres, so we still get the mechanical strength that you get with carbon fibre. Right. But they increase the surface area by a factor of 100. Wow. We've looked at different strategies on the resin where we put in a resin that has an electrical component in it that provides electrical ions that carry the, the charge, basically, right. and help us store the energy. But it's very modest levels at the moment. This yeah. is yeah, very experimental. So I think all those things we've seen today, they're all on a very small experimental level still, but it's fairly obvious that a really important thing for us to do in the world is get them onto a much bigger scale so they're actually making a difference, actually helping clear up a bit of the mess we've made over the last few years. And this is a very appropriate place to see all that stuff. And I am getting very, very wet.